The Queen's Gambit Radio by Peking Kitten Hello cats and kittens, Peking Kitten here. Today I want to talk to you about the difference between the screen and book path. First of all, in no way is this a rant saying that the book version is better. I love both paths and Queen's Gambit is one of the best shows I've seen in a while. And while the center coming of age story and one of a genius woman in a man's world is the same, there's no denying that these two characters are very different, especially when considering their motivation. Let's first cover the show, because without it a lot of us would have never heard about Walter Tevis's 1983 novel. The image of Anya Taylor-Joy is one of the first things that invites us in and her memorable performance keeps us hooked and binging the show. She is beautiful and wonderfully quirky, her deceivingly submissive looks above the board, her moves, the way she commands every room she enters, is simply irresistible to watch. However, you do wonder about this character's motivation and conflict. Self-destruction plays into it and the family backstory, the question of gender here and there, although you do have to appreciate the fact that it's not pushed too far as we're used to today, but there seems to be no real danger for her, no question of whether or not this incredible chess nymph will succeed in conquering her dreams. This bath seems to be the one we need today in order to be drawn into watching. The initial scene interests us because we love the glamour and beauty combined with destruction and drama to care. This is why the TV Beth doesn't know how to be self-conscious. She owns the space around her and there seems to be no need to hunger for success. She's glorious and she knows it. The rare occasions where she loses are the ones where she makes mistakes. She knows that at her best there's no need to worry and acts the part. In the end, when all of Beth's friends slash lovers that she pushed away rally behind her, it's believable because as unique as she is, we can imagine that people would willingly suffer some of her socially lacking characteristics. She is an alluring genius, an independent lover, and a self-destructive addict. This makes her absolutely irresistible and very similar to many central male characters in cinema and a couple of great female ones. I very much enjoyed watching this Beth. However, I'd love to have seen the book Beth on screen as well. One thing that's very clear in the book is that Beth is at least plain, if not ugly. It's obviously one of her key motivations for success. A plain poor girl in shapeless colorless clothes, she desires to look like popular girls in her school. She craves cashmere sweaters and fashionable shoes and haircut. When she does come by money, she invests both in chess and her appearance. Once she reunites with her friend from childhood Jolene, who once called her the ugliest white girl ever, Jolene tells her that she's lost her ugly. Beth insists that she'd like to be half as good looking as Jolene is, seemingly giving looks the same importance that her talent has. As a child, Beth is called phenomenal, and she looks up the word in the dictionary. The dictionary said, extraordinary, outstanding, remarkable. She repeated these words silently to herself now. Extraordinary, outstanding, remarkable. They became a tune in her mind. In no way does this aspect of Beth diminish her passion for the game. She truly loves chess and is obsessed with it. But it does give another dimension to the character and is making her more human and understandable. As she becomes better and more successful at chess, she also becomes more desirable. For example, after she beats Benny, he becomes attracted to her. From her first grand triumph, playing against the entire high school chess team, she enjoys both the game and the admiration of others as she plays. In those moments, she ceases to be the homely girl from the orphanage 
and truly becomes extraordinary, outstanding and remarkable. Her mind was luminous and her soul sang to her in the sweet moves of chess. The classroom smelled of chalk dust and her shoes squeaked as she moved down the rows of players. The room was silent. She felt her own presence centered in it, small and solid and in command. Outside, birds sang, but she did not hear them. Inside, some of the students stared at her. Boys came in from the hallway and lined up along the back to watch the homely girl from the orphanage at the edge of town who moved from player to player with the determined energy of a Caesar in the field, a Pavlova under the lights. There were about a dozen people watching. Some smirked and yawned, but others could feel the energy in the room, the presence of something that had never, in the long history of this tired old classroom, been felt there before. I gave this book 3.5 out of 4 pods, as I very much enjoyed reading it. I hope this review inspires you to pick up the book and get to know the other Beth, if you didn't already. That's it for today, thank you for watching and be sure to leave a like or comment if you enjoyed the video. Peaky kitten out! <laughs>